Okay, Assalamualaikum uh, and salam sejahtera. Now we will talk about the topic of infertility. Uh, we will talk about case study that we have uh, given. So Dr. Susi, 38 years old, uh, came to the clinic um, for a consultation. Came to a fertility clinic. Uh, she has been married for the last eight years. Her husband and her had, and her plan to start a family after three years of marriage, but failed to have any children. So if we look here, um, she already started a family, um, and after three years, she only started to plan for a for for a child. And so that means uh, she is now eight years married. So that means uh, she has tried for five years. Uh, without any success in conception. She also tried some traditional medicine for the last two years, but unable to conceive. She started her period at the age of 16 years with a regular cycle, two to four days every three to four months, so that's irregular. Her LMP is four months ago, and she claimed her, her relationship with her husband is fine and good, and her husband is fit and well and not a smoker. So these uh, questions or this information is to identify whether uh, she has a good relationship, whether she is um, she's not having any uh, relationship problem with her husband and also the condition of the partner is, uh, is well or not. Like uh, here, for example, she, uh, her husband is fit and well and not smoker. So we also assess not only the woman, we also assess the the condition or the fitness of the partner. Social history, she is a research officer, her husband is an engineer, so they are both, uh, we can say that they are both educated. Family history, sibling of uh, four out of seven, no siblings had fertility problems, so that means uh, no family history of fertility, infertility. Uh, medical history, she's fine, past medication history, only OCP for two years and it stopped uh, about three years ago, so that's fine. Diagnosis now, KIV for primary infertility. So primary infertility, as we have discussed before, it's a, uh, she has not uh, conceived before. So that's why she, uh, we can say that she has prim primary infertility. Uh, plan for an ovulation test, prolactin level, uh, thyroid function test, uh, FHS and MH level. So ovulation test, we have learned uh, before. Uh, she can check with the basal body temperature or ovulation prediction test. Prolactin level uh, and thyroid function test is to uh, real, is to rule out any hyperprolactinemia or thyroid disorders in this patient that might lead to infertility. So what are the possible causes of infertility? So we can we can re, uh, refresh back from the lecture. So it um, it can be due to an ovulation or oligoovulation. An ovulation is not ovulating at all. Oligoovulation is irregular ovulation. It can be caused by hyperprolactinemia or thyroid dysfunction. And also, uh, it can also occur because of the structural abnormalities of the reproduction organ. So number two, does uh, Dr. Susie has and have any risk factors of infertility? So if we look here, uh, she is 38 years old, right? So it can be that she is uh, at an advanced age for, uh, for, for fertility. And uh, she, is, uh, she is a research officer. So it can be that she has a stressful working environment. So it can be one of the risk factors. But if you look at the relationship with the husband and the, the, the husband is fit and well, so it might not be because of the husband. But we are still not that sure unless we unless we check for the quality of the semen. Okay. But the risk factor for Dr. Suzy herself is just the advancing age and stressful work life. Uh, describe two, so number three, describe two indirect tests that she could use herself to determine ovulation. So I have mentioned before, there are two tests to determine ovulation. The first is basal body temperature. She 
can uh, check for the body temperature every day starting from the first day of menstru menstruation and she have to check whether there is an increase in body temperature within the within two weeks after the first day of period so if it if there is an increase in temperature so that means she is ovulating and another one uh, another test is uh, the ovulation prediction kit so this is the the this is a more accurate way as compared to the basal body temperature. So she can use the OPK uh, kit test in which uh, using the urine and you can check for the LH uh, level in the urine to indicate any ovulation occurs. Uh, number four is uh, goal of therapy. So what is the goal of therapy for Dr. Suzy? Of course, we want a healthy pregnancy and lead to the birth of healthy baby to uh, select the best um, treatment if possible for her to, for her infertility problem. Okay, so the the next follow up. So she returns to the clinic for a follow up and she claimed that she is not ovulating based on the OPK. So her blood test uh, results are ready. So hemoglobin is okay. Uh, white blood cell is within range, uh, FSH also within range, LH is uh, okay, thyroid stimulating hormone is within range, free thyroxine as well, but her prolet her prolet prolactin level is uh, more than the uh, more than the normal value, okay, more than the normal range. So she was found to have hyperprolactinemia, and the doctor wanted to rule out any possible cause of that. And she was planned for ovulation induction method with permethrin. So the question is, um, so discuss the factors that determine the choice of infertility treatment for Dr. Suzy. So as we uh, have discussed before, there are some factors that we want to, uh, that we have to, uh, that we have to um, discuss before we want to start any treatment for infertility. For example, the duration of infertility itself. Uh, for example, in this case, it's uh, already five years of uh, trying and she still not be able to conceive. So it's more than two years. She can already try for an ovulation induction therapy. So as compared to other, other couples, for example, only one year or two years, we might recommend them to do... Uh, to have a, a natural way and then in in terms of uh, you know um, checking the temperature and do the ovulation test as well as uh, intercourse but in this case it's already five years she she it's, it's better for her to start with the ovulation induction therapy and also the risk of treatment for her she's still uh, quite young actually 38 it's not that uh, risky to the to to give any uh, treatment and also relation related to the age the the number of oocyte might still be prevalent for her in which we can still induce the the ovulation in this case and also we have to consider the cost effectiveness of the therapy itself okay so these are the things that we need to consider uh, and also the the partner itself we also we uh, we also need to identify whether there are any um, anything uh, or any causes uh, from the male side as well. Okay, number six, uh, explain the dosing regimen for the drug chosen and explain the treatment when the treatment is considered fit. So for the uh, drug treatment itself, it, the doctor here planned for clomiphene citrate for this patient. Uh, it's also okay because we want to induce induction, uh, but uh, in this case, she is having a, a hyperprolactinemia. So, what is uh, maybe another option for for this? Actually, uh, bromocriptine, which is a dopamine agonist. So, for patients who have um, an ovulation, which is not ovulating, with underlying hyperprolactinemia, we might want to consider the first choice is bromocriptine, which is a which is a dopamine agonist. So, we want to bring down the level of prolactin first and then we want uh, we we have to assess we have to monitor the prolactin level and also at the same time monitor the ovulation 
Okay, if the patient is still not ovulating, we might want to move, uh, move we also might want to uh, start her with clomiphene. Okay, for the clomiphene uh, regimen, as we have uh, discussed before, we um, we start with 50 mg per day, uh, 5 days, starting from the, uh, start, uh, start. so this is the first cycle. And uh, if the patient is ovulating, we can continue with the same dose for another uh, another five cycles. So the maximum cycle is six until she get pregnant. Um, or if the patient is not ovulating with 50 milligram, we can increase the dose uh, to 100 milligram per day for five days, and then check again whether she's ovulating or not. If she's not ovulating, then increase again to 150 milligram per day. And the total number of cycle of clomiphene treatment must not be more than six uh, cycles. Okay, and the treatment is considered considered fail if the if the uh, if this patient is not uh, ovulating or not get pregnant within uh, that six cycle. Okay. So what are the other uh, available treatment for infertility? Uh, as we have uh, discussed before, if she is not, um, if the treatment is not successful with clomiphene, she can uh, have a combination of clomiphene plus um, intrauterine insemination (IUI), or she can uh, have a gonadotropin therapy, aromatase inhibitors, or assisted reproductive technology like. Um, uh, IVF, okay, but we have to bear in mind that this um, treatment re related to the procedure is quite costly. So, uh, usually we start with the uh, we start with the ovulation induction first. So, what are the monitoring parameters for Dr. Suzy's uh, drug therapy? Um, it's the side effect of clomiphene or bromocriptine. We have to know the uh, the side effect so we can uh, advise the patient beforehand. Uh, side effect can be uh, for the for clomiphene can be vasomotor symptoms, headache, mood swing, okay, and also uh, for clomiphene treatment, the patients need to be need to be informed about the possibility of having multiple gestation uh, pregnancy, which is uh, tri uh, twin pregnancy or triplet pregnancies, okay. So because that that is uh, also one of the side effect of clomiphene. Okay, so this is a very uh, very straightforward case of infertility. So I hope it's clear. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay, and we will discuss further. Thank you.